folks, welcome back to another beautiful episode of Whining About Pest Control with Shell. I am, of course, Shell Hartzer of 360 Pest Consulting, and today we are going to whine about bed bugs. Yes, the tiny little hitchhiking, crappy little bloodsuckers that strike fear into professionals and customers alike. Yeah, today I'm drinking a Barbera, a nice red, because red is the color of blood and hate. So cheers. Mm. Might need to breathe just a little bit more. All right, so bed bugs. If you don't know what they look like, go look it up. But this brings up an interesting point because a few years back they did a study with uh, business travelers and leisure travelers and they gave them a lineup of five different black and white pictures and asked them to pick out the bed bug from the lineup. Now the business travelers did just a little bit better than the leisure travelers. They got it right, they picked the right picture 20% of the time. Now, since there were five pictures, it was literally a one in five chance, that's 20% for those of you a little math challenge, of randomly picking the right picture. All of this is to say that many people, particularly those not in the pest control industry, do not know what a bed bug looks like, which means proper ID is really important. And honestly, I bet a lot of you have gotten a call for bed bugs that wound up not being bed bugs. Most of us in the industry who deal with these tiny little vampires know that they hide in the cracks and crevices. And while the bed is the most common area to find them, there are times that you are going to have to look outside the mattress, particularly non-hospitality accounts. So we're talking residences, homes, apartments, assisted living facilities, areas like that. These are the areas people are often spending a great deal of their time on a chair or on a sofa in a wheelchair, an area that is not the bed. So the bed bugs are naturally going to go where their next meal is. They're attracted to that heat, the carbon dioxide, the natural smells of their host, people. They also have that aggregation pheromone, so when they find that great little hiding spot that's behind the headboard or underneath the mattress crease in the sofa cushion, they're gonna put that off and call their little friends, say, hey, it's a great place to be, come on over. Now, since this is whining about pest control, let's get to the good stuff, the control aspect. As with any pest, integrated approach is always the best. In this case, sanitation includes decluttering, washing all of the soft material you can, the bedding, the towels, the clothes. Exclusion in this case is not reintroducing them from other sources. Remember, these are hitchhikers. Then we get to treatments. Treatments can range from that simple crack and crevice when it's just a little itty bitty population to full on fumigations, heat treatments when it's reached that infestation level. So we've got liquids, we've got dust, there's new biologics, gas, heat, plenty of options. Just like Indiana Jones though, you must choose wisely. We know that bed bugs are resistant to a number of active ingredients, particularly the pyrethrins. These were the products, are the products that are commonly sold as DIY treatments. And initially the industry used a lot of these for bed bugs. So you know how resistance works. Stay away from that active ingredient. There are plenty more to choose from. Another note on treatments, as much as I really like insect growth regulators, IGRs, they are pretty much worthless against bed bugs. Studies have shown that you need somewhere around 10 times the label rate to even start having that impact on the bed bug. So don't waste your time or money. Whatever product you are using, make sure to rotate that active ingredient, particularly if you have to do repeat treatments. We just talked about resistance. We don't wanna provide that route to have them become resistant to more active ingredient. That limits what we're gonna be able to use successfully on them in the future. If you have those recurring bed bug issues or you have to go back for retreatments, rotate that product to a new active ingredient. Don't just rotate the product, new active ingredient. And as always, read and follow the label. Now there's so much more I haven't whined about here, including customer prep, no prep, hospitality concerns, preventative, preemptive treatments, monitoring, traps, more, but there's only so much wine in my glass and so much I can put in one episode. Ooh, but wait, one more good thing. The University of Nebraska a while back did a study that showed the higher your blood alcohol content, the less likely you are to get bit by bed bugs. So drink up. You can whine to me anytime about bed bugs. Next week, starting on June 5th, is National Bed Bug Awareness Week. So break out that bottle of wine and say cheers to the wonderful bed bugs. Make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss any of this. 
See you next time.